bringing in Grace Kern as well as Marlia Bajunga with us. Um, they are from the St. Hugo of the Hills. Thank you both for being with us. Thank you. Uh, when I first came across um, the uh, topic for today, I was like, why are we having them on? I'm not sure exactly because it said they became involved with Ben King. I'm like, who's Ben King and what is this about? And then as I started reading more, what a blessing your students are for so many other people. So tell us about this project. Marlia, do you want to explain? Okay. Um, this project was uh, part of our Catholic School Week service project that we do here when we when we serve the community. But since we couldn't because of the COVID um, situation, we decided to look back at this um, this man, this gentleman that we met a couple of years ago when we took our eighth graders to Washington, D.C. And we reached out to ask, what can we do for the veterans knowing his history with uh, supporting veterans who uh, return with um, some struggles with PTSD and just trying to assimilate back into society. And he told us that he had this um, foundation, Mindful Memorial Foundation, where they provide these cushions, meditation cushions uh, for the warriors uh, to use when they are in yoga or meditation. And we thought, okay, this is what we, this is what we can do. And Grace is holding one up right now. And the inside of the cushion, our students actually wrote words of gratitude or words of encouragement um, for the veteran who will receive that particular pillow. And um, it's just something that we really embraced. We were very impressed with um, Ben King and his, his, um, his, uh, his foundation and his effort in helping veterans. And we just wanted to be able to carry that on as an extension to our, our visits to Washington, DC. And so with that, Marlia, I, I would say I, so many uh, students right now, they probably miss these field trips, right? Uh, but what was it um, specifically that the students are getting out of taking part in this? I, I can probably answer that one. Um, well, the students, first of all, this is the, the finished product. So the students, Mr. King actually took them through a mindfulness presentation where they, they stopped everything that they were doing as very yoga like and they went through and at the end of that they thought about expressions of gratitude for people outside of this little classroom and he tied it very closely in with our school mission which is uh, as followers of jesus it must be diff different with us and it enabled the students to kind of think outside of just here in this in a small community in Michigan to a much larger place. And when we stopped the tape and they started writing, you can see some this is like a bean bag. And imagine a pillow. Everyone loves their own pillow. So the kids were really moved by the fact that this pillow was going to be someone uh, who was going through the same meditation process would be laying on it. And they have notes, thank you for your service and bravery, God is with you. Rest, we've got you covered in love. Mm -hmm. Thank you, we are here for you, pictures. And they really felt that they have grown outside of this classroom. Our mission is to take the, to show the children, you have to demonstrate to the world, not just to each other here in a, in a classroom. To the world and these people giving their lives that's what our country is about the freedom and, and gratitude never never take anything for granted and i think all of us have learned that through this pandemic oh so certainly and have they been able to connect with some of the service members that have received these meditation pillows uh, we haven't sent them yet we know exactly where they're going um, and actually, that's part of the, the reason that we got involved in this. When we went to Arlington, uh, Ms. Jungen's class had researched a fallen soldier from Michigan specifically. And, we, and Mr. King takes us to that specific grave. And we spend some time reflecting on people from Michigan who have done a service beyond all service for us. 
And, and so that for um, that, if I could throw the conversation back over to you, um, Marlia, when you talk to the students, what did they hope to get out of this beyond just this one project? Well, we have a couple things going on um, involved with uh, this project and with our affiliation with uh, or association with Ben King. We have the project that is the extension of um, of our Catholic Schools Week uh, community service and our connection to Washington as described. Uh, uh, and then we have the um, the connection the Michigan veteran, a fallen veteran, where, where the students will learn about, we research that veteran, what that veteran's life was like as a civilian um, and military life, how the veteran um, uh, was killed. And then they, they write poems and they write letters to the families to extend it further so that they, that they, they learn more about what they're doing and just rather visiting us uh, of a grave site or hearing a name, they get to know this this veteran. And I think that's what they're getting out of this. They're, they're putting a faith family behind just the name. Oh my gosh, and it's got to touch their hearts. What's been the response from some of the family members? Um, we haven't heard directly from uh, the family members. We've done this twice, uh, two different years. Uh, one family, uh, we, we had a very difficult time getting Ben King was was uh, continuing to to try to find that family, the, the surviving members. Um, and then the last one, um, Heath, uh, who we did last last spring, um, we sent a package to his wife, uh, his widow, and his daughter. And what was really beautiful is that some of the some of our students wrote letters to the daughter, because we did some math and we figured the daughter was probably around the same age as our students. And that made it very real to them as well. Um, and then I think some of the letters went to the parents. So we had like 50, over 50 letters and, um, and poems, but we haven't heard directly back. Um, I don't know if Ben King has. Oh, but still, it means so much uh, to the students, but I'm sure it means so much to the family members as well. And, and Grace, you talked a little bit about um, we've all learned lessons uh, during this pandemic and that the importance of little things in life. When it comes to mindfulness and gratitude, what has that meant or have you seen some of your students change as a part of this process? Well, you know, Ronnie, we we have been in person this entire year and which I, that in itself is something to be grateful for right <laughs> and these students are amazing to have 13 and 14 year olds that can't hug each other and touch each other and and they're big and their bodies are big and they they understand what they have to do together and when they worked on this project they got it they understood that they didn't think it was silly. I mean, he, we had to sit, they sat on the floor and he took them, rang a bell and they went through four stages of mindfulness and they, they totally embraced it. And when they went to write on those pillows, it, it was, it was very meaningful. And at the same time, they knew, you could just tell they know the world is bigger than themselves. And, and for a teenager to get that message to a teenager is just so important because they're our future. And so what goes on in here, the small little things is just so important and that they recognize that and they recognize what others have done. And so with that as well, how are you taking those lessons and trying to connect it to some of the images that they are seeing play out across our country right now? Well, right now we're working on a unit on social justice. And in my 17 years of teaching, the social justice unit typically focuses on the Holocaust. Well, this year I have focused on so many elements including that and the idea of what truly is social justice and how can things in history happen what was everyone else doing when this went on and and between the pandemic and between 
uh, our own country and just throughout the world, the things that are happening, it, it's very real. History is very real. And I think when we go to Washington and we see these historic things and, and making it become alive for these students, it's big. And, and we say them the pandemic, you're gonna be hearing about this for years from now, but they're in it, they're living it and they're realizing that they are a part of history. Very much so. And with that, because you, you talk a lot about going to DC, have you been able to take some of those field trips? Well, actually this year, our trip was planned for actually the election week. <laughs> oh, that would have been, talk about being a witness to history, right? <laughs> But because of the pandemic in the summer, we had to to cancel out. But we do hope to go again. I mean, we do hope that, you know, our travel agency has done wonderful things to try and already start to work with us to move forward, to continue to do this kind of thing. But but we feel fortunate that these this this activity that we did was actually with sixth, seventh, and eighth. So when those seventh graders go in eighth grade, they they will have already had a connection with Mr. King and with with the, you know, our military. And so we just think that's just so important to be connected. So Marlia, with that, uh, what field trips uh, do you have planned in the future when we get back to those? Oh, um, general or, or relating to? Just in general, because I, it, it's, um, just like Grace said, we're witnessing history right now and your students are witnessing that as well. And so you've gone to DC in the past, will you continue that or will you take them on different field trips? I think for the eighth grade, we will continue to take them to Washington DC um, and always try to make that connection to, as Grace explained, to the history behind that, the buildings there and the, and the place we go to visit. Uh, we do, um, you know, we take this, our seventh graders to the, uh, the Father, uh, Solana Center down in Detroit as a retreat that also connects them to um, not just the, the religious, uh, not just the religious retreat, but also to acknowledge the, the people in our community that's suffering that the Father Solana Center uh, works so closely with. And I think that's important for them, them to see a real life connection there as well. Uh, but just to kind of piggyback off what Grace was talking about, the, the children living this pandemic, we all are living history of this pandemic, but the kids have also written what their stories will be um, when they are adults one day and they will be sharing their, their um, they will be primary sources of this information and what will their story be when they share it with future generations. And they really have a lot to say um, about this um, you know, uh, pandemic and remote learning and being in lockdown and all of these restrictions. And, you know, they've, they've really, um, they're troopers. They really have uh, endured a lot and they're handling it quite well and trying to stay as positive as possible. Yeah, they've been more adaptable than some of us as adults. Yeah. Imagine the time capsule, right? <laughs> Remember when we were uh, kids and we did the time capsule? Imagine theirs. But uh, we want to say thank you uh, to the both of you. We're out of time, but thank you for being with us. We so appreciate it.